Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back with our series of the path to the Iowa. Next up on the list, tier 4 American battleship the New York. So, let's take a look at our commander. Once again, it is William Sims. We are running Andrew Cunningham and Paolo de Revel. We are running flammable cannoneer gyrating drill bits marksmanship the emergency specialist perk and we are running will to rebuild all right so if we go to our loadout we are running the uh, AA guns mod on our New York we have all of the upgrades we are running the boosters I'm gonna pull the booster off to show you the uh, base stats here and I didn't even have my uh, community contributor flag on. Feels bad. All right. So let's go look at our uh, survivabilities. 50,620 hit points. You've got 28% torpedo damage reduction. Better than the Iowa. Artillery, you have 356 millimeter Mark 8 guns. You have 10 of them. They reach out to 16.2 kilometers, they reload in 32.8 seconds, and they do a 180 degree turn in 40 seconds. HE shell damage of 5,000 with a 30% chance to set fire, and AP shell maximum damage of 11,330. Secondary armament, you have 127 millimeter Mark 7 guns, you have 6 of them. They reach out to 4 kilometers. And the HE is 1,800 damage with a 6% chance to set fires. AA defense. You have 20 millimeter Orlikon. I'm assuming that's Orlikon or Orlikon. I don't know. I, this one throws me off every time. Mark IVs. You got eight of those. They do 29 damage per second and they reach out 2.4 kilometers. <clears throat> 40 millimeter Bofors Mark 1, you have 8 of those, doing 45 damage per second, and reach out to 4.2 kilometers. And then you've got your 76.2 millimeter Mark 22s that you have 10 of, that do 28 damage per second, and reach out to 4.2. Maneuverability, you got an 18.9 knot top speed, with a turning circle of only a 600 meters, that is fantastic. Rudder shift time of 13.7. And the detectability by sea is 13 kilometers. Uh, detectability by air is 10.9. Guaranteed detectability is 2 kilometers. And the detectability while firing in smoke is 11.8 kilometers. Armor. This is where you get a huge upgrade over the Wyoming. Notice that belt armor. That belt is substantially thicker than the... Uh, the Wyoming's and that makes a huge difference now the uh, plating at the front still only 19 millimeters meaning you can go through your own plating with your your own caliber gun so keep that in mind if we get rid of all the extra armor and go look at our Citadel you can see that you have quite the Citadel it extends from in front of the front gun to right at the edge of the uh, the rear gun okay so it is a massive citadel and it's slightly above the water even though it doesn't really look like it from this angle it looks like it's right at the water line but it does actually reach above the water line slightly uh, and once again you have the exact same issue as uh, the Wyoming where if you're angled they can go straight through this this front plating and go right into your citadel okay so let's look at the overview agile above average ability to change direction we already talked about that it's got fantastic turning circle ironclad above average armor thickness greater resistance to all forms of armor penetration we already talked about that and she's slow below average maximum movement speed that is really the only knock for any of the american dreadnoughts is that it is slow new york developed from the wyoming class in contrast to her predecessor, she featured reinforced armor and a main battery guns of a larger caliber. When upgraded, she received reasonably good AA defense and improved torpedo protection. She entered service in 1914 and there were two of them in the series. So let's take a look at her real quick with the community contributor camo on. She's a good looking dreadnought man. I really do like it. You can see all those twin mount turrets. You get five of them. 
The one gun in the middle seems to always be, uh, like, needing you to turn to get it on, on target. It's got a terrible firing arc forward. Uh, it is pretty decent at the rear, though. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on Archipelago, and we're in the New York. Now, I personally love this ship, even though a lot of people say that they prefer the Wyoming over the New York. I honestly don't know why they say that. Uh, I personally have had no issues playing the New York. The biggest issue that I run into with these dreadnoughts is that they're just slow. Uh, but generally, you can you can pretty easily handle most situations in these ships, especially the New York. New York, with its improved armor belt over the Wyoming, allows the the um, dreadnought shuffle to be that much more effective. Now, we're going to showcase some of that in this fight. Now, you might see that I'm in a division. I have a carrier on my team, Mr. Soviet Death. It's been a while since me and him have gotten together. You guys remember him from the Minecraft series. Uh, also, his buddy Galley is in here as well. He's going to be in the Peter Veliki next to me. And we're going to push up this right side. Now, Archipelago is a map that I've played a few times. You guys might remember it from my Peter Veliki video. Uh, this was the epic freaking video that I uh, put out on the Meet the Peter Veliki. That thing was ridiculous. Um, but it, it's a great map. I actually like this map quite a lot. It's a lot of flexibility allowed in here. You've got cruiser islands, you've got destroyer ambush zones, you've got... It's a very good map. I actually prefer this map over a lot of others in the game. Uh, but we're going to take a shot right off the bat. We've got a Congo out here uh, bow tanking us. Good thing is we can go right through the bow. It's it's not that big a deal. And this is one of those things that you got to learn as a, as a new player, right? you got to learn what you can shoot, where you can shoot, where you're going to be the most effective, how you can avoid shells coming back. Notice that we didn't just sit out there broadside, right? As soon as we fired our guns, we started turning in. That made him miss. And now we've got a shot lined up on this Iron Duke out here who's mostly broadside. So we're going to reach out and touch him. Uh, then the Omaha gets spotted, and I'm like, well, I'm sorry. I was going to shoot the uh, Iron Duke, but if you get a chance to shoot a uh, angled Omaha or even a broadside Omaha, it's not going to go well for the Omaha. Wait for it. Pow! <laughs> Dropping the bomb Enemy from downtown, damaged. getting the Citadel, just narrowly avoiding the death strike. You know, in true Spartan fashion, we got to leave him with just enough to get away. But, uh, or at least for now, anyway. But uh, you can see torpedoes coming from angry smoke screens ahead. I believe that was our destroyer's smoke screen, but there is a second smoke screen out there as well. Uh, the Omaha, he's not long for this world. And just as we get ready to think about shooting him, our teammate uh, finishes him off. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take a shot at this Clemson. Now, I'm not going to lie. This caught me off guard. I saw the Clemson stop, but I thought he was going to start going forward again. He actually threw it in reverse. And uh, good play by him to avoid getting obliterated uh, for the moment. But you'll notice that I haven't really been focusing the battleships. Why is that? The reason I haven't focused the battleships right off uh, in the last couple shots is because I go for the threats. The battleships, yes, they are a threat, but unless they have my broadside, I'm not particularly worried about them. So if I got a shot at a destroyer or a uh, cruiser with torpedoes, you know, that sort of thing, I take those shots. Speaking of torpedoes, here's where you come into handy with knowledge, right? We know that those enemy torpedoes are from the enemy Farragut. There is absolutely no way that from eight kilometers those torpedoes were going to reach us. It's generally not it's generally a best practice to just assume all the torpedoes have a chance to hit you, so you need to turn to avoid them, okay? Generally speaking. But in this case, I knew that it was not going to be an issue. Uh, so now we're going to turn and try to get our guns on the Congo. He's not looking at us, so we get the front guns, hoping that that's enough to kill him, and then we put our rear guns on the Iron Duke. And this is another thing. Oh, never mind. Clemson has dictated our engagement. So we need to start. Now, he's at five and a half kilometers. He is definitely capable of hitting us from there with torpedoes. So what do we do? We use hard cover. We go straight for the island to my right. My teammate helps by knocking him the rest of the way out. So huge kill there, getting him gone. He still liked, likely launched his torpedoes. So we're going to turn into the island to try to use as much of the island to shield us from the torpedoes as possible. Obviously, my teammate is right there say, uh, doing the same thing. He's turning out to avoid or turning in to avoid these torpedoes, so hopefully he can avoid them. Iron Duke is still sitting out here, mostly broadside, slightly angled. 
Uh, he does actually shoot armor piercing at me, but you can hear him shatter off of the belt armor. That's what I'm talking about. Getting angled properly, if they shoot your belt, they're not going through. It's just going to be ricochets and shatters for them. And that's why I love this ship. It's fantastic. It's so crunchy. So tanky. It does have some serious weaknesses in that front, but uh, we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, but that's when the carrier gets spotted. And of course, once again, priority target. You got carriers, destroyers, cruisers with torpedoes, all priority targets. Obviously, you would try, and we get the Citadel. Plunging fire Citadel, and the man gets removed. Good night, sunshine. Head back to port. All right. Now, right now, our team has a commanding lead. But you guys know how it goes, right? Anybody who's played this game for any period of time knows that you cannot rely on teammates. You can try to rely on your division mates, but even then, sometimes, it doesn't go to plan. But luckily for us, I can rely on my division mates in this one. However, the two destroyers, not so much. You'll see why in a moment. Uh, but... We're going to start turning towards the enemy. We have two enemies left with a destroyer. So they, they have a destroyer, they have a cruiser, they have a battleship. They are very versatile in what they can do. We have a carrier. Our carrier can spot everyone. That is the best part. Uh, he spots the Carl's route right off the bat, headed towards the last known, and sure enough, manages to sniff him out. So we're going to put ourselves in position to help kill that threat. Obviously, with him being so close to the base, we have to deal with him first. We know their battleship spotted. He's outside of our range, too, but he's headed back towards their own base to defend the cap, which is a great move by him. So, well done. Uh, Julio Cesare on the enemy team is showing that he knows what he's doing. He's not a complete potato. So, that's something that you can... Little keys like that you can key on to decide whether you want to go broadside to somebody and be okay or if you want to, you know, stuff like that. Just little keys like that. Seeing what they're doing, like him going back to defend the cap, even though nobody was in the cap yet, he had already made his turn to go back and defend it. Uh, he is starting to turn away from it again, but I think that's more due to Soviet harassing him with dive bombers. But we, we avoid running into the island. We're going to turn in. We've managed to close the distance on the Karlsruhe. We also are closing the distance on the battleship. And this Karlsruhe is doing nothing to avoid us. Which is what you call preferable. So, we're going to go ahead, measure him up, get ready, aim ahead of him. We can see he's angled towards us slightly, so we aim a little low. He's going to run into him, and sure enough, boom! Over half his health gone. Now, we could angle the rest of the way out, get that center gun involved, which I believe I'm about to do, to try to finish this guy off. He's angled enough that I should be able to get a citadel on this man. Uh, and it looked like he was thinking about stopping once he got into the cap. Uh, you can see he is firing at Soviets. Soviets a very aggressive uh, carrier player, by the way, in case you didn't know. But Karlsruhe, uh, he angles away finally, thinking it's probably best to get away. And it's a little too late for that, Sunshine, as he goes down to a citadel. And that leaves just a destroyer who is in their cap. And uh, both of our destroyers are gone. So this is just our division versus the last two remaining players. We have all the advantage in the world with the exception we don't have a destroyer. They do. But we have a carrier. So it's not like we can't spot him. Now, knowing in this engagement that this Julio is not a terrible player, he actually gets the, the shot off first, which is a huge advantage. But... We're angled sufficiently, he managed to hit the belt armor, do basically nothing to us. Uh, we return fire, we get a little bit of damage, but really nothing to it. Now, here's the part that's going to catch me off guard. This man's not that far away, and he manages to score a citadel. See the 9700 right there? Score a citadel right through the front of my ship. I was not expecting that, I'll be real honest. So, uh, yeah, caught me off guard, but it is what it is. Two of us can play that game, and that's when he makes a critical mistake. He's trying to angle in. Notice our battleship split up. Galley went to the left. I'm on the right. That's forcing this guy to give one of us the side of his ship, and we Citadel the Julio there, taking most of his health, and now we forced him 
to make a decision. He's going to go broadside to me or he's going to go broadside to Galley. Either way, he's a dead man. And so he turns to bow tank me. I can still shoot through his bow. And I'm thinking about, well, I've got seven seconds left. And you can see, uh, Soviet is a madman. He's charging a battleship right now like a crazy person. And uh, we're going to go ahead and line this shot up. He's over-rotated, and we get another chunk, but not enough. We only get one penetration, one overpin. I was hoping to get that penetration through that bow plating and hopefully get it into his citadel again. I probably should have waited a little longer for that shot. But uh, now he's full, full broadside at four kilometers, and Galley's able to finish him in the Peter. So, finally, we've got one man left. It is the enemy destroyer. We are all ready to shoot this man. And so what does he do? The destroyer makes the call that he wants to charge one of the battleships. Not a terrible idea. He's shooting the, the carrier. He's trying to, to YOLO torp a battleship. And then on top of it, he's charging the one battleship that has the best secondaries for its tier. <laughs> you, you gotta love it, right? Like, I'm fairly confident the Peter and the uh, Imperator have the best secondaries for its tier. I could be wrong. But uh, it just shreds that Grimmy. Between me shooting him and the secondaries, like, it just shredded that Grimmy. So we managed to win the match, hopefully showcasing a lot more of the angling and, and shot placement. We get top of the leaderboard, Galley coming in second, Soviet coming in fifth. So if you like what we're doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.